I want you to picture a typical hot summer's day in Brisbane. It's 35 degrees and humid, that sticky, uncomfortable, subtropical summer heat. The oppressive heat that seems like it radiates from all directions as we walk across an open shopping centre car park or suburban street. Now contrast that to the respite of stepping into the cool shade of a large Moreton Bay fig tree's sprawling canopy. What we're experiencing are two phenomena intrinsic to cities, the urban microclimate effect and the urban heat island effect. And understanding their relationship to urban form has critical implications for ensuring that our cities remain livable in a warming global climate. During the 2022 Northern Hemisphere summer heat waves, we saw the dramatic consequences of an increasingly uncertain but warming global climate play out on our TV screens and news feeds. The recent summer heat waves resulted in a spike of several thousand deaths directly attributable to the extreme heat and exposed the vulnerability of highly urbanized areas to deal with a warming climate. But the effects of extreme heat aren't felt equally. Heat stress and mortality is felt more acutely in vulnerable populations, including the elderly, those living with a disability, and those without access to secure housing, who can't easily seek respite from the extreme temperatures. As a result of human-induced climate change, the intensity, frequency, and duration of these heat wave events is expected to increase, with severe consequences for city dwellers like us. As a result of ongoing urban development in areas such as southeast Queensland, the population potentially exposed to these extremes of temperatures is increasing at the same time. The urban heat island effect is a direct result of the characteristics of a traditional approach to urban design. From above, our cities and suburbs are beginning to look a lot like this. Natural landscapes are replaced with highly impermeable hardscapes with little room for vegetation and water. Instead of natural processes of infiltration and evaporation, water which falls on roads and roofs is usually conveyed quickly away and out of sight using highly efficient networks of stormwater pipes and concrete channels. The extensive use of materials like asphalt Concrete and steel absorb and store large amounts of heat, locally increasing air and surface temperatures. These factors combine to create cities which are hotter, drier, and ultimately lacking in amenity. And this is only exacerbated during heat wave events. So, if unprecedented heat wave events are actually becoming the new normal, is our conventional approach to urban development leading to cities which are at risk of becoming increasingly unlivable? Well, if we take a closer look, the concept of the urban heat island might actually be an oversimplification. As we all experience on a hot summer's day, temperatures vary significantly throughout the day and throughout the city, at a street or even an individual street tree scale. This is the urban microclimate effect. And this is perhaps more interesting because it's here that there's opportunities to adapt our cities to a warming climate. Just as COVID-19 lockdowns demonstrated the importance of having accessible public open space for relaxing, exercising, and playing, having accessible, cool, green public open space will become crucial during future longer, more intense and frequent heat waves to act as local scale cool islands to seek respite from the extreme temperatures. Understanding the factors which contribute to urban cooling at a micro scale enables urban de design professionals like me, councils and developers with strategies to implement these cool islands into our future urban fabric. I want to show you some examples of my work and research here in southeast Queensland. But this isn't groundbreaking work. We can all experience the urban microclimate effect in our own backyard, city, or street. Springfield Lakes is an example of an urban development which, at first glance, looks like more of the same high density subdivision. But at closer glance, 
has incorporated water-sensitive urban design principles into the urban fabric. Urban water bodies and naturally vegetated stormwater channels, known colloquially as rain gardens, infiltrate and treat stormwater runoff in the streetscape. Its lush green streetscapes and uh, natural creek lines stand in contrast to the surrounding highly densely developed urban areas. Satellite thermal imagery allows us to see from above where it's hottest and coolest at Springfield Lakes during a period of hot weather. As we can see, large expanses of highly impervious surfaces like metal roofs and asphalt car parks are visibly hot. In contrast, natural water bodies, natural water courses, and other areas of urban green infrastructure are up to 5 to 10 degrees cooler and help to cool surrounding residential areas. Urban water bodies and naturally vegetated stormwater channels cool the surrounding atmosphere. Passive irrigation of stormwater runoff in the streetscape enables healthier canopies for urban street trees and other green infrastructure, which in turn provides shade. In addition, green infrastructure also provides a range of ecosystem services, including creating corridors for urban biodiversity, soaking up runoff, and improving the stormwater quality of water entering into the downstream waterways. Another example of water-sensitive urban design approaches to inner urban open space design is the Hamlin Park renaturalization in the inner city suburb of Stones Corner. Hamlin Park represents a best practice approach to water-sensitive urban design, celebrating water as a core component of the urban open space. 800 metres of old concrete channel and public open space which offer little to the community in terms of amenity, shade or connection to the waterway has been restored to uncover this natural creek ecosystem. The redevelopment of Hamlin Park not only provides stormwater quality improvement from runoff from the upstream urban catchment, provides trees for shade and creates a waterway which is highly accessible to the local community. Going some way to restore the connection uh, to the waterway that's been lost over so many years. While it's early days for Hanlon Park, and we'll take a couple of years for the uh, new vegetation to grow into a shady creek corridor, there's reason to expect that in terms of urban microclimates, the redeveloped open space will provide a local cool island for the residents of Stones Corner and the surrounding local community. A place to seek respite from future more intense heat waves. By rethinking our approach to open space design and urban design, we can harness the cooling power of water and vegetation in both new and existing built up areas. By passively intercepting stormwater runoff in the streetscape, we can grow healthier canopies for street trees and other green infrastructure. Picture some of our iconic bridges, malls, and suburban streets as lush, verdant subtropical avenues, creating shady, cool links for commuting, exercising, and exploring beneath our canopies. And by uncovering un forgotten urban streams, we can restore water in the landscape and harness the cooling power of evaporation in addition to providing stormwater quality improvement for water entering our uh, urban waterways. Water-sensitive urban design, like the iconic Queensland of vernacular before it, is part of a crucial shift towards a new climate-sensitive urbanism. With the 2032 Brisbane Olympic Games on the horizon, Attention's turning to how we want Brisbane to look in 10 years' time, and I can't wait to see some of the ideas that you've come up with in the foyer. This is a generational opportunity for us to consider whether the traditional approach to urban design is leading to cities which are highly livable and climate resilient for the games, but more importantly, into the future. And there's learnings here for cities globally too. Water, and particularly stormwater, could be part of the solution to ensuring that our cities remain livable and climate resilient into the future, which 
like at Hamlin Park, is often hiding in plain sight. <laughs>